There are lots of houses in my neighborhood where they have succulents outside. This is one of them. So whenever I go on a walk, I tend to stop and admire their succulents. There's also this house which has lots and lots of succulents in its nature strip. So here you see a bunch of agaves and some jade plants and in the back there are some aeoniums but one house in particular has caught my eye so I could see something growing by the front door and from this distance I could tell that it's definitely an echeveria So I wrote a quick note saying, asking, Hi there, whenever I walk past your home, I can't help but admire the large echeveria you have in the big pot by your door. I was wondering if I could purchase a cutting from you. No pressure if you're not keen. Thanks, Chuck. Hopefully this works. I'm going to drop this by their home again. So I'm going to put my note in their mailbox. Hopefully, they see it soon. I was looking at my leaf propagations and I was thinking that maybe now is a good time to move them into pots because they're starting to get too, maybe, because maybe they're getting too large for the trays now. So that's what we're going to do next. So part of the mission today is to round up all of my smaller pots. So all I have to do is to look for the smaller ones that are suitable for the small cuttings. I think there's going to be a bunch here. Let's have a look. Yeah, these are good enough. There's some tiny ones here. So, yeah, this would be good. Some square ones. Oh, a stack of round ones. This would be nice. Are there more I can use? Perfect. So lots of the square ones. And I still see Yeah, more of the round and yeah, they're deep enough. So this is also good. There might still be more if I poke around here, but for now this will do. I have two trays of leaf propagations in front of me and as you can see some of the sprouts are already large enough to be transferred into their own pots. Some of them have already dried out like this one and those ones would be better off in a new pot. So I can so I can water them independently of the others because those ones would have a different watering requirement compared to the younger sprouts. I like calling this a graduation ceremony because they're moving up from the nursery and into the pots. So maybe we can call it the kindergarten. So I'm going to use maybe the deeper spade and I'll have a look at which ones I can transfer now. So this, uh, 
I can't remember what this one is, but this is, is uh, this is its own rosette and it already has roots, so I might as well transfer this one. Since the roots aren't that deep yet and it has no stem, I'm just going to fill up this small pot and make a little hole to stick it in and mound around it. So this will do for now. And let's get working on the rest. This one, I'm pretty sure this is a Black Prince. Because I remember pulling this uh, from a Black Prince before. So the parent leaf is almost dry, so I might remove it later on. <clears throat> like the previous one, this doesn't have much roots yet. It has tiny roots and it has a bit of tiny bit of stem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig another small hole like like in the previous one and just shift the soil around it. I'm pretty sure this is a pulvinata frosty. It already has a bit of roots but not that long yet. The parent leaf is almost dry. <clears throat> So I think it's a good candidate for repotting for graduation. We'll create a hole and just set it in and we're done. I wonder what this is. Sort of looks like a Purple Delight, but I'm not too sure. In any case, it's purple and it's lovely. Unlike the previous one so far, as you can see, it has a bit of a stem and a, well, a more established root system. So what I'm going to do is to give a larger allowance for the hole. Make sure there's enough for the whole thing so I just keep removing soil until I get enough a uh, large enough hole then I'll shift the soil around cover everything especially the roots and add more soil as needed and here we go This next one, to me, looks like a Francesco Baldi, but I'm not sure. It also has uh, an extensive root system. Well, much longer than the previous one. The soil, the soil around the roots are pretty loose, so I'll leave it as is. Here's yet another one of that purple thing. Yeah, I, I wonder if this is the purple delight. I didn't know I got many of the many of those leaves. So I'll keep doing this until I finish most of them. So how do I pick which ones to transfer? Well, I have a selection criteria for, for those that I want to, to graduate. And I've covered it in detail in another video. Uh, 
you could search through my propagation playlist there should be something there about leaf propagation in any case to summarize I generally look at the size of the plantlet so so for instance so this one is quite large now so this would be uh, one of the determining factors of whether I whether or not I should transfer them the next thing I looked into are the roots so I make sure that the roots are long enough or well established because that way it means that they are able to gather nutrients on their own and lastly I pick those whose parent leaf has already dried out like this one because this means that they won't be able to gather nutrients from the parent leaf anymore they would be forced to gather them on their own and that would be through roots so generally what I would do is to wait until at least two of those two of those conditions are met and that's what I work with so take this one again as you can see it meets the, the size criteria the roots aren't that long yet but the, the parent leaf has already dried out you can't find the parent leaf anymore so in this case I would still pick this as uh, graduates from the nursery because they would be able to survive on their own my leaf propagation video will have more details about this subject There's still a lot more potential to graduates in the trays and not to mention more over here. But this will do for now until I find the rest of the smaller pots. And of course I could always explore the idea of creating another mandala. Because I believe I still have more bowls. So at least this is an option. Today's the day that I'm picking up the Echeveria that I asked for. 
But I don't feel right just taking something without giving something in return. So I might give her something from my collection as well. I'm thinking I can part with this Superbum. So this is a Graptopetalum Superbum. And as you can see, I have two here. So maybe I can give this one. And to make it look more presentable, I'm going to add some top dressing. Oh. Right, Zach? So Zach is going to help me give it a bit of a drink before I take it there. Zaki, please water. Please water this one. Very good. Thank you. And of course, I'm not letting it go without a label. It's almost 8 p.m. and I was getting ready to go. I already have the super bomb in hand. But unfortunately, they sent me a text message saying that they are not available tonight. So I guess I'll have to wait for another day. I wonder when it will happen. I'm a bit disappointed, but there's nothing else I can do. So I'm thinking that maybe I can just continue working on potting up the smaller plants. So I found more of the small pots so I think this is a good way to pass the time Someone is coming over this afternoon and she's going to swap some elegance for these jelly beans and as well as for some pearls but I haven't harvested them yet. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes taking cuttings from my, from my pot. And here's my pot full of pearls. I'm going to take a few strands from here because this is also part of the swap. I'm not sure how many elegance she's bringing, so I guess I'm just going to take a few strands and pick more later. Uh, yeah, this one. Uh, uh, four strands. Uh, okay, four. So I've got four strands of the pearls and several cuttings rooted cuttings of the jelly beans so this is the sidum pachyphylum which uh, they call here as the blue jelly beans and these are one two three four four rooted cuttings of the sidum 
rub rotinctum, which is the regular jelly beans. And I have some of the, the red ones, the paler ones. So this is this is still sedum rubber tinctum, but the the type that they call aurora because uh, they go red. So what I'm going to do is to, since I want to keep the same pot, I'm just going to lay the pearls around them. Just lay it on the soil. <laughs> this is by no means a ball arrangement I'm just randomly placing them here besides I don't know how much elegance she has brought for me so this will do for now unless I need to pull out more strings later on I also gave Agraptoviria Douglas Hoth and cuttings of the Crashula Campfire. Are you done? Are you finished with gardening, Zach? So out of the swap, I got a whole box of elegance and a few, I can't remember what the name was, I think Hippostreum or something. So they look like onions. And I also got, uh, was this a Thersiflora? Yeah, uh, Crassula terciflora, similar to the pagoda or something like that. And the other thing we got is a new trike for Zachary. You like it, Zach? Wow. I'm going on a mission. A mission to get more soil because we ran out of bags of potting mix. I just usually take some of the $245 potting mix and these are 25 liters. So I've got 8 in my cart. I also keep a look out for this $1 terracotta pots and these are 17 centimeters in diameter. So I'm going to get, I'm going to grab quite a few of them, maybe at least 30. So I got 36 of them. Of course, no bunny strip is complete without a venture into the plant section. <laughs> This Orion is much larger than my hand. So is this Hercules or Polydonis? Alright, so they're all here. Eight, eight bags of potting mix and 36 pots I'll just move one of these bags on top of the pots so they so they won't move around so much and I'm at another shop to grab my pebbles looks like there's some spillage here 
But anyway, these are these are the right size. These are the size that I get. Seven mil. And there's two bags, and that's just right because I'm after two bags. So I'm going to grab this two now. Two bags of pebbles. That's mission accomplished. And now we're going back to base. And so I made it home safe. And by safe, I mean no succulents jumped into the car. So after days of going back and forth and not having our schedules aligned, huh, the day has finally arrived. They're at home right now and I'm going to jump in my car, bring along something I want to swap and hopefully I get the plant soon. So we'll see how it goes. Huh, the anticipation man, it's killing me. So here it is, and as just as I suspected, this was Azoro, and I have no idea how long this has been here. I would guess 10 to 15 years, because look at the look at the length of those stems. They haven't been beheaded or chopped off or reset at any time in the last decade or so, I guess. But look at that, and. Here's what I got. It's pretty huge. Almost almost as big as my head or maybe even larger. So I was a bit modest and asked for the second largest rosette. <laughs> well, I didn't want them to lose the largest one. In any case, this is pretty huge and definitely larger than the Zorro that I have. So here's my current Zorro and here's the other one, the new one. They haven't had the same amount of sun exposure so this one is much greener while the one that I have here is pretty colored up. This is uh, this is remnants of its winter colors and in spring and during the war warmer months it will tend more towards dark brown or burgundy and as you can see this one has a long stem so this this is technically a head cutting what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop all the way right where the green area is this way it will grow roots more vigorously than, than if you chop all the way at the bottom. So yes, that's what I'm going to do next. My phone just died right as I was chopping. So I missed taking a video of it. But in any case, I finally managed to chop the bottom right below the last leaf and I have a rosette of this height. Here's what's left of the stem and I wonder if some, if some pops would still grow off of this one. It's a long shot but we'll see. Rosette. I need to keep this rosette somewhere dry while, while it tries to grow roots. So as you can see, it's bare right now. 
So what I'm going to do is, I have this pot in front of me. And I'm just going to let it sit on top of it. Oh, and the flower stalk just, just bent. Oh well, it's alright. I was going to chop it anyway. There's a few leaves here that I could probably try propagating from. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. As I was saying, I'm going to keep this rosette on this pot, just hovering. And I'll leave it, leave it dry until, until it starts to form roots. And when that day comes, I'm going to pot it up, put some soil. So it, the roots have somewhere to go into. It's a good time to do this now because it's spring, end of spring and almost summer. And echeverias are actively, actively growing during summer. This means that it would take, this means that it will take no time for the roots to, to appear. I would guess maybe a week or two before I start seeing roots. But I won't be surprised if it takes at least three weeks because the last time I tried it, I tried uh, beheading something like this. I think it was a uh, dick's pink. It took about three, somewhere between three and four weeks before any roots came out. But that was mainly because it was uh, mid-spring, I think, or yeah, somewhere mid-spring. At that time, it wasn't growing as vigor vigorously yet. And I was mentioning earlier, I'm going to remove the flower stalk. Especially since I broke off part of the part of the stalk. And no, I'm not just trying to save face. Okay, I'm totally trying to save face. But in any case, I'm going to remove most of the stock I'll try to cut as low as I can cut hopefully I cut it cleanly and I think it worked <clears throat> let me try the other side Yeah. <clears throat> so I got the flower stalk off and I think I just have to rem hmm. maybe I'm going to keep the stalk as is or maybe cut off the leaves cut off a small section yeah I think that's what I'm going to try because it's pretty hard to remove these leaves without destroying the nodes so I'm going to carve off the leaves and include some pieces of the stem. Man, this is so tough. I think I'll need the secateurs. Okay, round two. This time with secateurs. So... Let's just chop. Yes, this is much easier this way. I've read that people have had success with this method, so leaving some parts of the stem. I'm not sure if I'm doing this correctly, but we'll see. I guess we'll know in a few weeks. I'm going to keep the stem together with the leaves, just so they are all in one place. There's really no other reason for me doing it this way. It's just mainly convenience. So this is not really a well thought out plan. 
But as always, I'm just making up stuff as I go along, at least based on a hunch. And just so it doesn't accidentally get wet, I'm going to leave this here by the shelf and surround it with some random stuff. Or, I don't know, maybe I could put a chair over it. But I have a feeling that someone, someone would be moving the chair out. Or maybe I should remove those pots. Oh, it's a huge pot. I have to be careful or I'll break them. And you're going there. This might be too dark a spot, but I guess this will do for now, unless I think of a better way. Wait. Yep, I might need to make space over here. But for now, this will do. Well, I do think it's important enough to do it right. To do it correctly the first time so i made some space here moving the, i just moved the trace around so hopefully it will fit this area so let's see yep just just barely made it Right now it's being supported by the lower leaves, but in a few days, those leaves would be too weak due to not having enough water. Well, they have no roots. So I think I might, I might need to replace the pot with something shallower and more, I don't know, something that would give it more support. So I decided to opt for a smaller pot. Hopefully it will still fit here. I just need to move it around. So the stress would not fall on the... On some leaves. You know, it has to be evenly distributed among several leaves. I think this will work for now. But I might have to adjust it as the days go by besides the leaves are uneven this one is lower than this one so it's off balance right now the leaves will get floppy in a few days or maybe in a week so I'll have to keep checking and make sure that I balance it properly I might even have to use some padding or something for it to stand on but I'll leave it this way for now, and hopefully there won't be any strong winds so it won't topple over or be flown away. Because man, this thing, this something this huge, it's definitely going to be top heavy. So there's a lesson in all of this. First thing I learned is that the succulent crowd is a generous crowd. The other thing I learned is Maybe I should have been more aggressive and asked for the largest, the largest rosette. But oh well, we can't have everything I guess. It's a pity that I didn't get the chance to speak with the grandmother. But overall, it was a fun experience. In a way, it helped me overcome my shyness. Even though that was just a note. A note that I left. You know, there was no direct talking involved. But at least it was also a lesson in patience because it took me a while, uh, took me a lot of back and forth checking with their schedules because uh, we were supposed to meet over the weekend. You remember when I put up that teaser video? We were supposed to meet the day after but but life happened and our schedules didn't meet. And I was actually talking, as you could, uh, you could get the context from the, the text messages. I was actually chatting with the, the grandson 
and he has his own life too. He has a social life, so <clears throat> I can't really compel him to to work with my schedule, and I can't, and he can't get get me to work on his schedule. Based on what happened, uh, we were both unavailable over the weekend. Something came up for him last Sunday, I think. Monday was no good for me, and today we were supposed to meet earlier today around noon time. He told me to check on him around noon time, so uh, 11 a.m. this morning I sent him a message asking if he's available, and I didn't get a reply until 3 p.m. So it was a lesson in patience. But at least you know at the end of the day, well. The day hasn't ended yet. I still got my Echeveria. It's a large Zorro and I'm pretty satisfied. So yes, overall, this was a great experience. You should try it too.